If Reality Check Radio enriches your day in life, support us to keep bringing you the content, voices, perspectives, and the dose of reality you won't get anywhere else. Visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week we'll find out what they think about the Maori Party protests and their grandstanding over swearing an oath to the king. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go, so let's hear what Cam's buddies have to say about Te Party Maori grandstanding. Good afternoon, Paul. Welcome to Cam's buddies. Good afternoon, Cam. How are you going today? Yeah, good. Uh, much better than last week, that's for sure. Very good. You're looking better too. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, body of a finely tuned athlete and all that. Exactly. Yeah. So this week I thought we'd I'd ask the question about what you thought about the shenanigans of the Maori Party or Te Party Maori as they like to call themselves these days and their little protest about the government and then their little um, swearing in ceremony on Tuesday where they appear to insult King Charles in taking the oath. I thought it was very interesting that. Um... If you want to take the politicians' pay, you have to take the oath. So <laughs> what they do is they put up all the malarkey about, oh, no, we're going to say to the treaty or to Ngāti um, Whātua or to our whānau. But in the end, they take the oath because they want the money. And I always think that's pretty funny stuff. And then um, Willie Jackson comes in and says, oh, why don't you say it in Maori to Winston and all the sort of thing. Winston doesn't humour him, just smiles at him and thinks you're an idiot. And um, he does what he wants to do because, of course, he's in government. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, they did all this grandstanding, uh, organised what what is a rather pathetic um, protest, really, when you consider the amount of people that were out protesting, you know, the mandates and the groundswell stuff. The Maori Party didn't seem to be able to organise that very many people to hold up the motorway system at all. And then their grandstanding is is exactly that. It's just grandstanding, wearing silly hats and treating the parliament with disrespect. But ultimately, they, they've got to swear the, the oath because they don't get paid otherwise. Yes, it's amazing what the golden rule does do. And um, <laughs> when people have the golden rule, in effect, he with the gold makes the rule, then that's the new golden rule, of course. Then these folk often um, fall into line because it's all about the money that they want. And they're saying, oh, the young people care. If you go and interview 100 young people on the street and ask them about this, they'd all say, eh, what? They wouldn't even know what it's about because they don't care. They would more likely say we support Palestine, especially if we're gay, because gays for Palestine is a really good thing, That so they think. Or they think that um, we, we, we have the right to democracy so we can go and say silly things um, about folk. It's the only people that have a democracy over there, of course, is Israel and not the Palestinians. And I look and I'm thinking the, the young people seem to be deluded by the media often. Mm. And I think um, our, our Maori folk here, um, they got more Maori in parliament than ever before so that they've got double the amount of Maori politicians as they have um, Maori in the populace, and they're saying, oh, this is a big backward step for Maori. Um, hello? Um, looks like it's the most forward step that we've ever seen. And when we um, stop fooling about with two governments or whatever they're thinking about, and New Zealanders all get on with each other and we all try and make the country great, we get on a whole lot better and everybody has a nice time. And as for these people saying, oh, we're not going to do that, and they don't like the fact that the um, Maori smoke more than um, the rest of the country, so the um, taking the no smoking as a generation away affects Maori. They're just looking for something to be aggrieved by. There's, there's no reality in this. I mean, Maori have the same opportunities not to buy cigarettes as the rest of the populace. And if their relatives smoke and they can see them all croaking with emphysema, they get a, a close-up eye view of why it's not really a very good idea. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? That is that there can't be any child that goes to school these days 
that doesn't know that smoking is bad for you. And yet we seem to have this abiding belief that the government will protect us from our own stupidity. And, and you know, I, I mean, I only smoke cigars and I only do that for health reasons, but I don't smoke cigarettes uh, because it's stupid. And um, and I see mm. see the diseases that come from that, plus the increased taxes that you have to pay for the privilege of smoking cigarettes is a tax on stupidity. Well, I think if you are stupid and you get taxed for it, I think that that's sometimes an okay thing. Um, I've smoked in the past. I thought um, better of it, and I quit smoking, and I feel a whole lot better for having done so. But, I mean, I quit smoking, I think, 20 years ago. And um, uh, from time to time, I still look at them thinking I wouldn't mind a puff. So it's absolutely definitely addictive stuff. But uh, I'm looking thinking, no, nah, that's not for me. I don't need to worry about that. And I don't want to set an example to any young people that actually look at me and think somehow I'm a role model. And um, mm. But back to the question you asked, I think it's um, if, you, if you say which treaty, different treaties, and the one that they're talking about, which is the the, the Maori version of the treaty, mm. there's a lot less in there for them. The, the translations are quite different. So um, in one, it talks about sovereignty being ceded, and in the other, it doesn't, and all these sorts of things. And, and if you were to ask the average person, even the people, in, I think, in the Maori party, and until they've been schooled up on there uh, about how unfair it is, they never thought it was unfair because they used the electoral system, got themselves voted in, and uh, they're now in Parliament getting more money than they've ever had in their lives. And you look and you think, well, can't be all bad. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You know, Debbie Nariwa Packer was on on Tuesday morning on breakfast TV with Shane Jones and insulting him as as old and irrelevant, and and then sitting there saying that the Maori, uh, that the New Zealand First Party and the ACT Party don't represent Maori. Um, they look, they only got six percent and eight percent. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, hang on, why isn't the the interviewer saying, well, hang on, you only got three percent, so how can you <laughs> how can you claim to have a mandate for Maori, which is seventeen percent of the population, when you only got three percent of them to vote for you? And what he's insulting the ACT Party and the New Zealand First Party, their leaders are Maori, <laughs> and they're in government. Who would have thought? That's the thing. And they're in government making decisions. They're in government making decisions, not shouting from the outside. And that's the other thing. If you look at the cabinet, 20 members of the cabinet and a third of them are Maori. It's the biggest number ever of Maori cabinet ministers. And these clowns are protesting and saying this is a racist government and uh, and they don't represent Maori. Well, Winston Peters would have something to say about that, I'm sure. So would David Seymour. Well, also, it's not a representative government when twice the number of um, cabinet positions are held by Maori than it, they represent in the population. But but no Europeans complaining about it. No Asian no. is complaining about it. Um, our Pacifica people aren't complaining about it. People are saying, um, let's get on and do some stuff. So so 3% of the vote now think that they can call us and tell us who's complaining about what. Um, they don't re- represent their people well, I don't believe. And most Māori that you speak to want to have a good feed, a good hard day's work, a game of rugby, and a few laughs, maybe yep. a song or two on, on the guitar. Now, that might sound very stereotypical, but I've employed many Māori who are the loveliest people. We're having jokes, laughing, joking around. It's all good. And I've also had businesses where the Māori were the – and I've worked for them. They were the bosses. All still good. And so I'm thinking, this is, to me, how commercial things happen, not by the government saying, oh, we'll, we'll hold you back here and we'll lift these people up because they, they've got a harder, harder road to hoe. At the end of the day, life's tough, work hard, succeed. Moan about how everybody's done you wrong and fail. If you keep getting told that you, you're hopeless and you need the government to look after you, you'll be hopeless, won't you? And you may even need the government to look after you, <laughs> which is which is what they want. <laughs> <laughs> and then when when the government says that they can be your daddy, um, and then you get to do everything that you're told, whereas when with right leaning centre right leaning governments, when they say get out there and give it a go, work hard and you'll be rewarded and successful, 
that's what we do, and we have, and and then all sorts of things go well for all sorts of people. That's right. We need to get back to that. Thank you so much for your call, Paul, and we'll talk next week. All good. Take care. Bye for now. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Hello, Cam. How are you? Fantastic. This week, better than last week, that's for sure. Excellent. So this week I've got a bit of a, a curly question. No doubt you're going to give me your curmudgeonly um, opinion on that. But what do you think about the performance of Te Party Maori or the Maori Party with them organising a protest and then, um, you know, performing like trained seals in Parliament, um, pretending they're not going to swear the oath and then eventually having to swear an oath um, to the king, even though they said they wouldn't do it? What are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think, um, basically, I think it's just a bit of a laugh, except it's not, of course. But they obviously have never done a, a salesmanship course. If you want to actually get someone to be sympathetic to your cause, you don't go pissing them off. And that's mm. what they've effectively done with a hell of a lot of people today. As for painted face, trilby wearing, glassing, glasses wearing, whatever his name is, in Parliament, yeah. What has he ever done? I was trying to think, um, you know everything, Cameron. What has he actually done? How long has he been in Parliament? And what has he actually achieved? Well, I think what he's achieved is uh, expanding his girth, uh, supping at the trough. Um, a quick research into him says that he's done three-fifths of five-eighths of stuff all. And he's been in Parliament. That's what I thought. He's been in Parliament uh, where he stood for the Labour Party originally in 2014. Then he joined the Maori Party and then was elected in 2020. And then basically he's done nothing since and will continue to do nothing. Um, he's passed a couple of, or had a couple of, uh, you know, uh, things to say about abortion and conversion therapy and stuff like that, but not much really um, in anything that he's done before entering Parliament or after? That was I thought. Um, I see that um, none of them were going to uh, swear an oath of allegiance to the king until someone reminded them unless they did that, they couldn't enter Parliament and therefore they wouldn't get paid. The moment they heard of not getting paid, they quickly changed their mind, which is so funny. Well, that's it's the so thing. Typical. I mean, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It was all grandstanding. They were going to have to swear the oath in any case because it's a legal requirement. And they grandstand and, and you know, try and rewrite it and insult the king by calling him a scab and by using Maori and thinking that they're all a bit clever. But the reality is, is that the treaty that they swore allegiance to in their pretend allegiance the Crown was a party to anyway, so they're swearing allegiance to a ratty old document that was found on a shelf um, falling to pieces that the Crown is a party to. So it's hilarious, uh, really, when you think about it. It is hilarious. And what were all those thousands? I, I assume it was thousands of people protesting. Why weren't they at work? No, it'd be has, hundreds. Has the country it, it, lost productivity? I don't think there was much of a protest at all. I mean... Voices for Freedom uh, had organized and Groundswell have organized much bigger protests. So, you know, it doesn't say much for the organization power of, of Te Party Maori. But then, you know, you look at it, you, Debbie Nariwa Packer, the co leader, she was on breakfast television on Tuesday morning, uh, slamming the ACT Party and New Zealand First for only getting six and eight percent. And it didn't ever enter her brain you know, that actually that, that was more than double what she got for her party, which is 3%. Yes, I heard that. I, la I laughed at that too. <laughs> but, but, you know, no one pulls them <laughs> Look, up and says, hang so on. Bizarre. You, just have, you, just, you just have to think of it as a joke. You seriously do. You cannot take it seriously. Except, you know, one of our colleagues, Stephen, couldn't make our meeting this morning because the motorway was blocked. Yeah. That peeved me. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. The motorway was blocked presumably by the colonialist motor vehicles that they were using um, as they're protesting colonialism. You know, it's it's insane. Yeah, why weren't they on horses? Or, or did they actually have horses in 1840? No. I knew the horses they stole off the British. Oh, of course. Well, that's well, where, the, that's where know, the Kaimanawa horses come from, actually. You know, the famous Kaimanawa horses, a little bit of interesting history. 
there was a bunch of British soldiers, you know, and as you head up the um, uh, the Napier Taupo Highway, and you you go up that big long hill, and and at the top of the hill there's a bit of bush there, and there's a an, an ancient site or not you know an old site from the 1840s. There was a group of British soldiers that were ambushed there by Takuti's um, lot, and all their horses escaped into the into the Kaimanawas, and that's where they come from. Yes, well, I was about to say that I actually had two relatives killed by Murray, and one of them was in that party you were talking about, yeah, and the other one was much more recent, which kind of like hardens me a little bit against their attitudes. I wish they'd actually spend more time looking after their children and not murdering them on a daily basis. Well, you know, that's a, a debatable point, obviously, that they would um, oppose, but they don't march in the streets for the young kids that are being bashed to death, do they? Way back um, when I had the on- onerous job of um, doing photographs for Her Majesty's New Zealand Police, uh, we did all autopsy photos. And I tell you what, every single... Um, child that was killed were married. There wasn't one that wasn't. And the atrocious things that were done to them, and I believe it's just the same today. Why don't they concentrate on fixing that up? Well, chance would be a fine thing. They've got more important things to worry about. Really? Yeah, like oaths Mm. and things like that. Anyway, Jack, thank you for your comments. Um, Curmudgeonly as usual, but on point. And I look forward to talking to you next week. See you, Cam. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Marcus. How are you this week? G'day, buddy. I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Keeping out of trouble this week? Yeah, I, I thought I'd come down to uh, Tauranga to see what was happening down here with regards to um, all the protests that were supposed to happen today. In Tauranga? You're in Tauranga? Yeah, yeah. I came down to visit the old folks, you know. That, Got to stay in a- their will. That's a little bit out of out of the way from your um, westy kicking ground, stomping ground, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm keeping it nice and quiet down here because I might get a bit scared if I know there's a west in there in the midst. <laughs> anyway, this week's topic <laughs> is um, what do you think about the shenanigans of the Maori Party, their protests on Tuesday, and their grandstanding in Parliament over the swearing of oaths? Oh, I think you pretty well much. Uh, sums it up with that. It's just shenanigans. I mean, they're trying their hardest to be relevant. Um, I say good on them. Go protest. I'm all for protests. You can do all that. It pisses people off, and um, and they and they either agree with you or don't agree with you. And I mean, how many how many percentage did the Maori Party get this um, this last just, election? Two percent was it? So just a bit over three percent. Yeah, three percent, which, which is more than they deserve, quite frankly. But I mean, hey. I'm all for protests, and um, we all know what it's like when people, the general population, um, slams protesters for being, you know, idiots and not not allowing people to go to work and all that sort of thing. So, I mean, yeah, sure, they could have done it probably a bit better as far as um, allowing people to go past and not stopping in the middle of the roads and that. But, hey, at the end of the day, they um, felt like they achieved something. So, whatever, good on them. Mm. I mean, clearly I don't agree with them. As far as the shenanigans and, and, and Parliament, they're just trying to be relevant there. I mean, they're separatists and they're racists and, and they're everything that we don't want New Zealand to be. Um, and I, I say let them talk and let them let them show themselves for who they are. I mean, ultimately, they're not in government. I mean, um, you know, I mentioned to a couple of the other buddies that Debbie Nari Rupaka was um, moaning about how uh, New Zealand First and Act don't represent um, very much of the population, a very tiny percentage. Of course, New Zealand First got double what the Maori Party got, and the ACT Party got more than double what they got. But but it was uh, just said matter of factly, not challenged by anybody in the media, that the Maori Party got just three percent of the vote. Uh, Maori make up seventeen percent of the electorate. So and thirty five percent of the um, of the cabinet. And 35% of cabinet. I mean, they're, they're sitting there saying this is a racist government, but all the evidence suggests otherwise, that they're not racist at all, that we've got more Maori in cabinet than we've ever had before, even under the incredibly woke Labour Party. Well, and This is just a hangover. This is a hangover from Labour days where they just say stuff and then the media accepts it as 
gospel and they just blurt on about all this rubbish and 100,000 homes and that and Māori parties say New Zealand first and act uh, racist and that's it. That's all they have to do. They don't have to prove that. They don't have to pull any evidence out. In fact, the evidence, again, those pesky, pesky facts, they're the opposite. They want all New Zealanders to be equal. I mean, that's exactly the opposite to being racist. It's literally not racist. And, and when you talk about one rule for somebody and one rule for somebody else, that's an advantage to one group of people. And if that group of people happens to be a race, that's by definition racist. So I don't, I mean, the facts aren't on their side. So, I mean, I, I say just let them keep talking and hopefully the media gets slammed by people like Winston Peters and they pull them to account and say, actually, let's talk about what the word racist means and let's, let, let's nail it down and let's, let's get you, the media, to tell me exactly what policy in my party is mm. racist. They yeah. won't be able to do it because there isn't. Well, that's the thing. The, the, the Maori Party seems to want to shut down debate and conversation and uh, discussion over what is actually meant by the principles of the treaty. Because there are no principles in the treaty. There's three articles. There's no principles. Uh, mm-hmm. and, yet, and yet we're being told that these that they want to fight this government because their understanding of the treaty is the right understanding and the Maori that are in the government now are the wrong sort of Maori and therefore we should ignore what the voters have actually delivered and do what they want. Well, the, the woke left never, ever want to talk about facts. You know? They don't want to talk about what the, what the actual meaning or what the intention of the, the treaty is because in their opinion... In today's world, this is the way it is. And so when they die off and the next generation comes in, they'll have a different opinion about what the treaty means to them. When in fact, the treaty was derived at a time when things were much different than today and the Māori and the Pākehā all got together and said, OK, everybody's equal under the law of not King, uh, whatever Queen his name is, Charles. Yep. Yeah, Queen Victoria. Um, everyone's equal under the eyes of her, and we've all got a chance to do well in this country. We're going to call New Zealand. That was that was what it was intended for, you know. And yeah. nowadays, it seems that you can have some sort of um, interpretation every single generation along the line. So I mean, this is just going to ca- carry on forever. And that's what I'm saying. The, wo- the woke left or the woke people don't. I hate that word woke actually, but I'm using it anyway. Those people, the left, the crazy loony left don't want to talk about the facts because if you nail them down to the facts, then they'll just revert to name calling, which they do in this case, call you racist or, and they'll um, completely shut you off as somebody they don't want to li- listen to sort of thing. So, I mean, I think it's bang on right. What, what, um, uh, act and, and what St. Peter's is doing. They're, they're looking at it going, well, hang on, let's, let's put a final nail on this. And it's been tried before. So it'll be, be very interesting how they get on. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's not much really you can say because every every generation is going to change your opinion. It's you know, it's like anything. You, you can yeah go on all all night about what you think something is, and someone else will have a different opinion to it, and then later on in life that opinion changes. It's like pronunciation of Maori language. I mean, now it's not Whangarei, it's Whangarei, and that, that changes every five years. It seems it's like no one knows how to call these names. Yeah. So, Who's right? Who's wrong? It was Wangarei when I was a kid. Yeah, and Tauranga. Yeah, Tauranga, not Tauranga. No, and it's two two po or something like that now. Now in Taupo. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like I say, it's just it's different opinions. They come out with this and they say, "Well, this is a quick way of doing it," so everyone brings it on board and they do that. Then the next generation comes along and says, "No, that's not what the treaty meant." Look. We've been hard done by. We need to get some more money from the government. We hate. Yep. And so the guys, the guys. Um, I mean, they should be shamed. Uh, I mean, I'm not much of a monarchist. I'm so, um, monarchist. Is that a real word? I'm not much of a um, monarchy fan with regards to the king and queen and all that sort of carry on. I don't. I'm not adverse to being a republic. Although I don't think we're we're strong enough to be a republic because we haven't got any any sort of place in the world where we can stand on our own two feet. We rely too much on other countries. However, uh, I mean, if you're going to go into Parliament, we're under the, the governance of King... Uh, what's his name? Charles. Charles. King yeah. Charles. 
So therefore, we have to we have to you know just come to his rule, and so that part of the tradition is you have to do that. If you're not going to do that, then you can bugger off. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing, isn't it? They don't want to play, but they have to play, and uh, yeah. you know they can do all of their grandstanding all they like, but at the end of the day, they had to swear the oath. Otherwise, they wouldn't get paid, or they couldn't be an MP. So they decided to take the money. And they didn't the have money, any exactly principles. Exactly right. The money trumps. Yeah, money trumps their principles. Bang on. Where, where does cowboy hats come into the into the fold in the history of Maori as well? I'd like to know. Oh no, he didn't wear a cowboy <coughs> hat today. He had some other sort of flax thing on his head. It looked like a clown wig, actually. But... Yeah, I, I I did see that. And there was another guy. Who I mean. Like... Looked like he was out of a, um, you know, a Crash Bandicoot PlayStation game. <laughs> Mario Brothers music in the background. <laughs> uh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all a big sideshow, mate. It's all just a big game, and 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 the media's loving it because they got something to sort of hang their hat on. I mean, the protest today, I think. I mean, they they got their word out there, and the media's reporting on it. I don't know if they achieved anything. They feel like they did. So. What, 300 cars, I think it was, up in Auckland? Yeah, it was, you know, there's probably more cars. 500 car- downtown, right? Yeah, there's probably more cars in uh, the local shopping centre car park than there were at the protest. Yeah, there probably wasn't even 300. I mean, the media probably boosted those numbers up as opposed to what they did with the protest down at um, Wellington where they, they shrunk those numbers and all those protests in Auckland where they said there were 2,000 people when it was like 10,000 plus easily. Yeah, exactly. So... Who knows? You never the, trust the media them. are in on it, though, media, anyway. the media are in on it. Though, yeah, of course. They? Yeah. yeah, they they yeah. want they want I mean, all of this um, agitation and um, you know uh, separatism, separatism, threats of violence, all of that sort of. They want all of this because they don't like the results of the election just as much as the Maori Party doesn't like the results of the election. I reckon Winston should come out and call the Te Party Maori Party the River of Filth. That'd be awesome. <laughs> He's got far too much gra- gravitas to do that. <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> All right, Marcus, I'll let you get back to um, buttering up your parents in Tauranga, yeah. and uh, we'll have to catch cool, up when you get back. So, um, and now that I've got this bug out of the way and my black eye has uh, is started to heal, uh, it'll be time That's for right. a smoke. Yeah. Time for a smoke on the boat. Yeah. I'll give you. A, I'll give you another one, mate. In the other one, how's that? <laughs> Even that up. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we, maybe I should bring Probably. all the recording equipment and do a cams buddies from the boat. There you go. There you go. There'll be a bit of swearing in the background if we sail in. Oh shit! Here comes something. <laughs> exactly. All right, buddy. Thank you <laughs> for for your call, and we'll talk next week. All right, mate. Catch you later. Welcome to cams buddies, Jimmy. Cameron, how are you this week? Oh, fantastic. Did you get disrupted on on Tuesday morning? No, of course not. I didn't get disrupted on Tuesday morning. I I work gentlemen's hours. Oh, lucky for some. Yeah, I know some people. So, what's your topic today? Topic today is precisely that: the disruption on Tuesday, the Maori Party protest, and the carry on down in Parliament, uh, fake swearing on the treaty, and then insulting the king as they swore the oath of allegiance, what your thoughts are on those? I thought that the protest was just a big bunch of unhappy socialists who have lost an election and don't want to accept the result. The parties clearly campaigned on the policies they're implementing, unlike the previous Labour government who didn't. Mm. And, yeah, they're just a big... It was mostly just you know, socialists and unemployed people. I mean, honestly. I mean, I guess there's there's one benefit. There was one benefit, as you were stuck in traffic behind a bus with my picture on it. (laughs) I know, I keep seeing your fat chops all over the show, mate. It's bloody terrible. Yeah, never. That's why it's good you're a blogger. You can no longer say that I um, don't take public transport. I've been on several buses. (laughs) The um, yeah, no, the the look, the the protest was just not accepting the result of the Democrat. We've just had our election. Like you can't say that there's any surprises here, and it's really this this three years is going to probably be quite um, entertaining. I think disruptive. 
But it's just hope that the, none of the current MPs back down from their policy positions they got voted in on. Because, I don't think know, they're going to. I, you know, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure that ACT and New Zealand First actually want the Maori Party to be having protests and marching and saying outrageous racist things um, because it suits their agenda, um, that they can stand up against it and say, well, you know, um, we might not be the right sort of Maori, but, you know, at least we're in government. Well, that's one of the funniest things is Seymour and Winston pushing this are literally Māori in Shane Jones. I mean, it's just bizarre. But um, I, I, I think that the problem we have is that the media p- sympathise with the protesters more than with the government. And so the spin you see on it is much more sympathetic to, you know, the cause. Than there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be any spin on it. it should- it should be just the facts. You know, they shouldn't be sympathetic to the government or the protesters. They should say there was a protest today, 300 people annoyed um, a million commuters, and those are the facts. Oh, look, I agree, but that's just not how it is, and they, they seek clicks and they seek outrage and they seek, you know, and um, so they were all there with their cameras on all the overbridges and they were snapping it up and loving it. And it just causes drama and they get clicks and it just... We literally have to stop clicking on their pages to kill them. It's just metaphorically kill the media business. You know what I mean? It just it just can't. It's going to damage our democracy because it's right. just literally not the views of the public. But it is appear. It's made to appear like it is. Yeah, and and, and that's the thing. I think the government can help with that uh, by removing their advertising dollars from spending it with these organisations that spend all of their time attacking them. So this, they should just call in all the heads of departments from the government, you know, departments, sit down with the finance minister, Nicola Willis, and she'd sit there and say, well, how much money did you spend on advertising on radio and, and what was it for? And uh, can we knock that on the head? Let's just knock that on the head for six months and see how that goes and take their money off them. I think it would be hilarious. I'd, I'd, love to, I I'd love to see them do that. That would just be delicious. But is that, like, I haven't seen any sort of policy on that. I think Winston made some noises during the election, but I haven't actually seen any clear policy on, you know, advertising spend or, you know, shifting budgets because it's such a problem. Like that protest today was just basically woke Marxists and activists marry, and, and it just pissed everyone off I talked to about it. They're all late to school and late to work and late for appointments. Mm. And if you watch the media... Seems like it was a great thing. How yeah, because they're sticking what, it to the government that they don't like. That's the thing. The media are in on it, and that's what I've said. They're in on it. They actually want this to happen because they want to undermine the government from the very beginning of it. Well, I don't know what to do about that, mate, because that – well, we do know, but well, there's nothing I can do about it other than not to click there, stupid. And, and the experts the media go to are literally people, activists, why don't they go to a few pissed off school mums who are late? Why didn't they ring up Cam's yeah, buddies? They could, they could. We could, or maybe I could rent them Cam's buddies for a bit, because you guys <laughs> seem to be far far more sensible than than the than the talking heads that the other media use. I'm, yeah, well, that's true, but they just, I mean, they just seem to go to all the the the, the most leftist on Twitter end up talking on the news. It's just like, well. This is, you know, there's just, there's just too extreme. They're not talking to the right people, but I guess they just want the activation and the clicks and the, yeah. yeah. So I just think that protest on Tuesday was just, just insane, basically, just a pointless loss of public support for the Māori Party amongst the activists. Let's forget, remember that the Māori Party only got three percent of yep three percent the vote. Seventeen percent of the population are Maori, and they can only get three percent. Yeah, it's just not widely supported. They're a minnow, but but they win seats due to the, you know, the seat situation that they're in. Well, Debbie Nariwa Packer, Debbie Nariwa Packer on breakfast television with Shane Jones on Tuesday morning was attacking ACT and New Zealand First, saying, "Well, you don't you don't have very much of the vote, and um, you know, you don't represent Maori and and." Nobody said, hang on a minute, you know, lady, you only got 3%. You know, that's half of what New Zealand First got, and it's less than half of what ACT got. So, 
act in New Zealand First Plus National as a majority of parliament, so why don't you shut up? Well, I thought that she rebutted Shane by calling him misogynist. That's because she's gotten a decent argument, other than saying that he doesn't just doesn't like women, which is insane. Well, that's which just is, typical. They're which is nuts because if it's still racist, it's completely nuts. Because if you know who Shane Jones' wife is, you can you know he's not a misogynist because he he'd just get a clip if he was. Cop it. Who is his wife? Dot. You famous person. Oh, no, know she's well known in Maori circles, but. You know, she's not one to take any nonsense, and she wouldn't take any misogynist nonsense from Shane Jones, that's for sure. Absolutely for sure. So it's just an insult. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it's like when they say, oh, you're a racist, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Said the racist. The <laughs> they they exactly. don't like your politics, you're a racist. They don't like your, you know, the, the argument, you're a um, misogynist. It's just, it's just getting so boring, and I've said it before. I think even on Ken's but it's gonna they're gonna lose the meaning of the word and people are not gonna care. And then when there's real racism, you know, it's just gonna mean nothing and it's 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 a bit of kind of sad really. Well it's so. like it's like, you know, we get called conspiracy theorists and cookers and all sorts of nonsense like that. They're just words, you know, and they don't mean anything, they don't signify anything, and that's ultimately where the Maori Party is sitting. They're a three percent party in opposition. We'll never hear from them again inside the parliament. There's nothing that they'll be able to do. They'll get very few questions um, because that's how it works. And uh, and the grown-ups will carry on governing the country um, for the better. And, and you know, it's it's brilliant to see that, and uh, I hope it just continues. Well, that's exactly right. But I hope that they don't use their position to cause big division and end up with protests on motorways and you know, causing real strife and there ends up with, you know, police there and battens and, you know, just, it just, it just no one wants it, you know, it just needs to be argued out politically. And if we, if we don't start, if we stop accepting democracy in the votes, then, you know, we've got real problems. Yep. So that's exactly They right. need to make a good cause and they've got three years time. They need to make a good cause and get voted into power and change the policies if that's what they feel. But shutting down motorways is not the way to win public support. No, but in a way, not. they've shown them true selves, but it could cause some carnage in the next three years. I see David Seymour got heckled. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't. won't worry him. But I'm just, sure he doesn't care. You know, imagine if people were, the vaccine protest was, you know, heckling MPs. It was all called harassment and misogyny yep. and blah, 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 you know. So. Total rubbish. Anyway. anyway, Jimmy, thank you for anyway. your comments this week, and uh, we'll talk next week. Thanks, Kim. Cheers. See you. My buddies are awesome. They never let me down, and we got a few cold, hard truths there for sure. Tell us who you think is the best of Cam's buddies and why by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.